Caravaggio's conversion of St. Paul, which you see here on the right, is a massive painting showing a very important story from early Christianity. Now, what Caravaggio has done is he has depicted the saint flat on his back, arms flailing while a hostler cares for the horse with little concern to the fallen. The situation could easily be a stable accident, lacking the devotional elegance that had been characteristic of the Renaissance and earlier Baroque work. Perspective, light, and chiaroscuro was intended to bring the viewer into the scene, involving them in the work at a deeply personal level. Again, by simplifying it, he creates, well, an everyday drama something that you could imagine yourself as either the caretaker for the horse or as St. Paul on the ground. Now, his figures are heroic with powerful bodies and clear contours that he's drawing in part from Renaissance art, but you see that musculature is much more realistic. It's not the sack full of nuts that we see from Michelangelo, as it were, where the muscles are very individualized and highly accentuated. Instead, this is a much more realistic depiction of what a real person may be, albeit a well-built real person. The use of light here is both shocking and intriguing, although in this case, the light of the divine is used to shine down with revelation on Paul, as we see in the biblical passage. So a light flashes on him, he falls to the ground, he's blinded, he can't see anything, and he is converted from a prosecutor of early Christians to a follower of early Christianity. So what Caravaggio has done is really remarkable. You would think that what you want to increase the passions of a pious believer is to add more pomp and circumstance, to add more to the image. What Caravaggio is doing is he's actually taking away from the image. He's simplifying it into a very basic human drama, something that we could imagine happening. And in doing so, it makes it more relatable. He's not focusing on the miracle. He's focusing on the drama.